So, yeah, we were just talking about this, and I'm now seeing a whole bunch of articles about it as well. Sadly, Tony Todd uh, has passed away at the age of 69. This is coming from Deadline, of course, known for a, a variety of films and TV shows and animated projects. I think, um, uh, I mean, I best know him as, 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 of course, Candyman. I think a lot of people, you know, that might have been their introduction to him. But... Um, but also, yeah, Platoon, Final Destination, uh, obviously, probably uh, um, you know more recently of younger viewers. But here, let me read this, chap. Tony Todd, an actor who played the killer in Candyman and its 2021 sequel, and appeared in Platoon and three Final Destination films along with more than 240 film and TV credits spanning 40 years, died November 6th at his home in Los Angeles. He was 69. His reps confirmed the news to Deadline but did not provide a cause of death. I hope it's not Trav. I mean, it's obviously Trav. I hope it's not, like, really bad. Born December 4th, 1954 in Washington, D.C., Todd pursued acting at the Eugene O'Neill National Actors Theater Institute at Trinity Rep Conservatory, where he honed his skills and developed his commanding style. It's true. Among his first screen roles was playing the heroin-addicted Sergeant Warren Oliver Stone's Best Picture Oscar-winning Vietnam War classic, Platoon. Todd went on to guest uh, on such popular 1980s and 90s series as 21 Jump Street, Night Court, MacGyver, Matlock, Jake, and which I think they're uh, doing a new thing with that. Uh, Jake and the Fat Man, Law and Order, The X Files, NYPD Blue, Beverly Hills, 90210, Zenware you know, Princess, Murder She Wrote, Murder She Wrote, Star Trek Next Generation, D Space Nine, Voyager. He also recurs a pesky TV news reporter, Matt Rhodes, on Homicide Life on the Street, and as Gus Rogan, more than a dozen 2013 episodes of The Young and the Restless. All the while, Todd continued acting for the big screen. He appeared in 1980s dramas Lean on Me, Colors, oh yeah, I remember Charlie uh, Parker, Biopic Bird, starring Forrest Whitaker. But his best-known film roles came during the following decade. That's true. The six-foot-five Todd starred in the 1990 remake Night of Living Dead, which we recently saw, uh, um, we did a watch party for, where he played as Ben, the role played by Dwayne Jones, the George A. Romero iconic 1968 original, which I thought, that, I thought that remake was great. I think that's a super underrated remake. I thought it was really, really good. The only thing I didn't really like about it was, had, I mean, I didn't like about it, but also found it very funny. They had the one guy playing, like, the racist Italian guy. Uh, his performance was just like, ah, the whole time. But everything else about the film was great. His next big role likely is his most famous, playing the mythical title Creep of the Hook for a Hand in Candyman. A uh, character who reprised in the 2021 sequel, the same name, but uh, b briefly, briefly. And I didn't, I really think Nia DaCosta did him dirty in that movie. Candyman 1992 film was the ghost of Daniel uh, Robitaille, whose parents were enslaved in the 1800s. He became an accomplished painter, but eventually he fell for a white woman whose arranged father sent a lynch mob to kill him. Uh, Robitaille was burned on a spot uh, where a public housing project later is built, uh, Cabrini Green and where a series of unexplained murders occurs. The Candyman legend lived on in the 2021 sequel directed by Nia Takasta. It was among a number of horror tales for Todd that would continue throughout his 40-year career. Uh, you gotta have audience sympathy for the character in some way or another. Todd told Deadline 2022 interview, there's gotta be something attractive about the character that makes people want to root for them, but at the same time feel repulsed by the idea. And for me personally, for every film that I do, I create a backstory for all my tortured people and my heroes alike. Todd continued uh, to work steadily in film, TV, and video games throughout the 21st century, including a recurring gig on CIA director of NBC's Chuck, Freeform is Dead of Summer, and MTV VH1 Scream. His silver screen roles mainly were in B-movies. He also was a sought-after voice actor. Hell yeah, he was leading his rich and uh, resonant pipes to dozens of roles ranging from Star Trek and Call of Duty games to TV's Transformers Prime, which we talked about recently, actually, and Be Cool, Scooby-Doo, in such films as Transformers Rise of the Fallen. And they have a they have an error right there. <laughs> uh, possessed of a warm laugh and a generous spirit uh, that belied his hulking appearance. And he was a big man. Todd continued to work into this year, including stream and lead a role in The Bunker, one of the more than a dozen upcoming credits. Oh, I think I think I know what that is. He appeared in last year's uh, stream, Realm of Shadows, and Werewolf Game. And in 2022, South Pacific was premiering Bitch Ass, Bitch Ass. Todd also, uh, about a half dozen small films during the 2000s, appeared as himself in dozens of mostly horror-themed documentaries and docuseries. And information on this virus was incomplete. So, yeah, I'm sure the more will be revealed over time. But yeah, this, this wow, I didn't. Yeah, this this one hurts, chap. This one really hurts. Damn. Um, yeah, Tony Todd was such a was such a great actor, genre actor, appearing so many things that you know that I certainly have appreciation for. You guys appreciate. We have a shared appreciation for. You know. Um, I mean, you know, forty year career, uh, having two hundred what two hundred fifty two hundred plus. Uh, acting credits or credits across multiple projects, that's incredibly impressive, you know? 
he leaves behind uh, a, a very impressive uh, legacy and one that we're going to continue to watch and, and indulge. And in. I feel like at some point we got to, we, yeah, we got to do a Candyman watch party now. Got to do that just to honor him. You know, one of his most iconic roles, a movie that I think is very good. Very, very good. But, yeah, I want to hear from you guys. We can watch a couple of clips, too, from some of his films in just a bit. But, yeah, guys, uh, the passing of uh, Tony Todd. Let me see what you're all saying right now. But, yeah, I'm, hmm, I'm a little bummed. More than just bummed. Sad. Uh, let's see what you guys are saying. Um, Mathalos. Good to see you, Mathalos. Hope you're doing well. Sorry to bring down the stream, but uh, sadly, Tony Todd just passed away. We were just talking about that. It was just... And thank you for letting me know, guys. Seriously. Damn. That's a shame. Austin Nick and Tristan's Prime and Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, that's what they're... Okay, gotcha. It's a bummer. Legend, the horror genre. Much appreciation for all he gave to us fans. And my thoughts go to his family. Oh, absolutely. Just, yeah, yeah. It's just so sudden. I, I guess we'll learn more. And 69, It's that is so young. That is still so young. Usually, it's like... You at least want the person to make it to their 80s. Like, 90 is like, hey, fucking 90, you hit 90, that's good. But 69, he had so many years left to do so much stuff. And uh, Maybe Candyman 1 and 2 double feet. That'd be fun. That'd be fun to do. Just Ty, I wish he had a better role in Candyman 2. <laughs> Candyman 1, I, I, uh, I've, I've seen Candyman 2, I think. I've seen big chunks of it. If I've not seen it all the way through, I've seen major chunks of that movie, like on the Sci-Fi Channel back in the day. And yes, it does not... Uh, I think compared to the original uh, Candyman, but honestly, I think I think I'll take Candyman two over the most recent Candyman film. I think it, I think it's better than that. Do you like Candyman two? I think Candyman two. What I've seen of Candyman two, um, because I haven't watched that film in years, but I think I like that movie better than the most recent one. Which again, I don't blame him for. It's not his fault that he wasn't used well. I still don't understand why you you you, you turned the Candyman into a moaning ghoul. No one's been able to answer that question. It's like why. Why? <laughs> Doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Let's see your B, my victim. Oh, my God. Yeah, always love that line, the damn delivery. Yeah, his delivery. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, the fact, yeah. Black butter. Like butter, like, like, a, like a hot knife through butter. His dialogue and his delivery. Uh, I was really excited to see him prize his role. I was excited, too. I was, I was like, yeah, let's get him back as Candyman. They don't fucking... <laughs> You know, other than that CGI cameo at the end where he's floating like, ah, I told everybody. That bothered me. Um, came in too almost as a fairy tale vibe to it. Yes, especially because they, they show like what happens to him and everything. Even though we kind of, you know, that's, that's, what, that's one of the crazy thing about the original Candyman is it does do some uh, tell not show, uh, which is usually what you shouldn't do. But they do have a British man. A very, uh, a, a very charismatic British man tell the tale of Candyman, and it does work. <laughs> it does work. But in the sequel, they do show his, um, his origin, like everything that happened to him, you know, getting uh, attacked and lynched. And uh, um, uh, Well, I guess they change it up a little bit, don't they? Don't they, like, set him on fire? They, they, they put all the bees on him, they attack him, they cut his hand off, and then they set him on fire, and I forget that they lynch him. It's been a hot minute. Any case. But, yeah, that's what they do. Um... But yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, you know what, chap? Let's let's look up some of these scenes right here. Not the bees. Yeah, that was the original. Not the bees. Uh, let me get that up there. Candyman intro introduction. When he introduces uh, introduces himself. Oh my god! Just the, oh yeah, here it is. Be my victim. Yeah, this scene. This scene. And what's so crazy about this scene is that it doesn't come until like the forty minute mark. Because so much of it is just kind of building up Candyman and who he is and just like the Cabrini Green, you know, uh, uh, projects and the, the apartment building there. And like, because you, you follow the character, Virginia Madsen's character of Helen, who wants to do like a college paper on, on all, like, you know, urban legends and things. But she's kind of like exploiting these people at the same time, you know, and she's like, ah, no, this is real. And he's like, hey, I'm fucking real. I don't know if I can show this on Twitch because there's like a lot of blood in, in the scene that's coming up right now. But, um... What basically happens is after this moment, because you guys have never seen Candyman, she is just surrounded in blood. But it ain't her blood. It ain't her blood. And then for the rest of the movie, pretty much is is just him fucking with her <laughs> the entire time, and and just destroying her 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 life. You know, her her relationships, her her professional career, everything. 
Be my bitch. Candyman, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what that candy night. That's what candy night would absolutely uh, say. No question about that. Yeah. No, not yet. It, to me, she's just infatuated by him, like, under a spell. Like, you can even tell by the lighting, like, she's, like, fall, like being hypnotized, like, falling into a trance, right? Um, Yeah, it's a great role. It's a great role. There's also a... <laughs> There's also a wonderful moment later in the film when she's like uh, talking to the psychiatrist because she's like, basically condemned or being held at an insane asylum. And then the Candyman just straight up uh, like the, the kills in this are pretty like fucked up, even if it's it, and it, even if we don't see everything. It's the sound design, too. Like he loves to gut people with his hook or like literally shove his hook up people's assholes and just rip them all the way up to like their their you know the back of their necks. It's like, "Oh my god." And he does that to one guy and he just pulls a fucking Batman. <laughs> he just pulls a Batman out of there, like goes out a window. It's it's awesome. It's really really cool. So, um yeah, it's an iconic role. Amazing role. And an iconic, you know, uh movie monster, supernatural slasher if you will. He's great. He's great. You can tell this is based on Clyde Barker and all based on the dialogue. It feels Hellraiser-esque. Oh, definitely. No, it's, it has like this, this, uh, this almost, almost kind of like it's this romantic, um, philosophical, gothic dialogue, right? Like Hellraiser just has that where it's just like, ah, oh, there's something about this. You know, where it just feels so, even 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 though it's a relatively small film in scope, similar to like Hellraiser, but just the themes themselves, they, they feel so big. Like, you know, as we go into, like in Hellraiser case, we go in like the hell dimension, these 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 things, angels of some, demons of others, the Cenobites, they, they exist to give pain and pleasure. They can't even tell the difference between them anymore, right? It's really fascinating. And Candyman's the same thing. It's like this urban legend breathed, given life. You know, uh, again, and 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 uh, doing these horrific things, and torturing people. And it, he doesn't. He's not going to kill you yet. He's going to break down your entire life beforehand. So then you will be his victim. You, I'm going to make you my victim until I'm the only thing that you have left, and you want to be with me. And it's like, ah, oh, it's so fascinating. Yeah, a bit of a Dracula vibe. That's that's another. That, that's a that's a good good comparison, Deadpool. Yeah, a lot of Dra a lot of Dracula in there. Hundred percent. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like, you know, Dracula, he's lusting after all these ladies, putting them under a spell, hypnotizing them. Good point. Good point. Yeah, it's kind of like folklore, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things, yeah, he became a ventriloquist, but hell yeah, he did. <laughs> one of the things I like about Candyman series is that they changed the origin in each movie. This makes sense since Candyman's an urban. Yeah, oh, that, that is an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Should have made him a giant bee. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, that is, well, it's so funny when you bring up the bees. I think someone mentioned it earlier. But uh, so there's a uh, an iconic scene in the movie where Tony Todd uh, has like all these bees all over him and they're real. That's the other thing that annoyed me about the more recent movies. Like those are all fucking CGI bees. Those aren't real bees, especially towards the end. It's like, give me a break. Uh, and I understand why they did it because, you know, safety concerns and shit. But they lathered Tony Todd and Beasley and all these bees in his mouth. And those are bees were all real. When he did that open mouth kiss with Vir uh, Virginia Madsen. It's like, whoa. And apparently he had his, in his contract where at, for every bing that would, bee that would sting him, he would get $1,000. And I think he ended up getting stunned like 24 or 25 times, I think, throughout the making of the movie. And so he made an extra $25,000 in the movie, which is a pretty good deal. <laughs> it's a good little 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 clause right in the contract. I like that. So, yeah, it was, it was a 23 times, 23 times. Yeah, so yeah, 1000 bucks per bee sting. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, plus royalties and, you know, forever and merchandise and all that he'd get. But, yeah, yeah, what a, a you know, an iconic character. Yeah, he made 23000 yeah, 23 grand. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. Virgin Madsen is definitely allergic to bees, so that scene was especially different. Oh, wow. Oh, shit, I did not know that. Damn, damn. Oh, did they figure, um, did they learn about that, like, while making it? And, like, she had, like, a really bad reaction or something? She's like, oh, you are allergic to the bees. <laughs> no, it's, wow. Ironic. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I feel like he just had so many more movies and roles, obviously, uh, to do. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very disappointing to know that he passed away. Damn. Yeah, this one hurts, Chad. This one hurts. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah, look up that clip. Yeah, some of his voice work, too. Transformers Prime, which I'm uh, relatively unfamiliar with, but we'll take a look at this. I am not here to fight, but to give you this. It's a big hammer. The Forge of Solus Prime 
could be rigged to blow. Yeah, isn't it neat? Dreadwang, what do you ask in return? Only that you use it wisely. Yeah, man, there's done so many roles. And yes, I agree with you, Deadpool. If, I, if, if they were going to do Venom, like properly, obviously, uh, in the MCU, if they were eventually going to build towards like a, you know, a, um, a Tom Holland, Spider-Man and Venom confrontation, then absolutely they should get Tony Todd to voice, you know, Venom. That would have been perfect. It's like, hey, he did such a great job in the, in the game. You want more of him, honestly. So, yeah, that would have worked wonderfully. But, ah. Yeah, he just drops, he just drops, he just fucking <laughs> dies, he just transforms. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's had so many iconic roles, and damn. It's too bad. Too bad. Ah, uh, chat. Well, my friends, it's hard to transition <laughs> from, from, from that to Resident Evil Code Veronica. But I do want to play some Resident Evil Code Veronica before we get to the rest of tonight's uh, stream today. Or, excuse me, um, rest of the night's content today. But, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. Shall we play some Resident Evil Code Veronica? Which I've been really enjoying. Let me go ahead and move a few things over and we'll be good to go. Mm-hmm. Beep-bop, beep-boop. Do that. Biggie's with Lunar Beast Tank Time. I know, I know. Tank controls. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing a little bit better. I have been playing a little bit better. So, <laughs> that's been working out. Just, I think, Tony Tell being Indiana Jones about Destination Reboot is Legacy. Could just, yeah, no, he's in the... Yeah, in terms of upcoming projects from Tony Todd is the ones that I know about. Um, uh, definitely know. Like, I knew he was... He, like, he plays a, a major character in the Indiana Jones video game. The Great Circle, I think it's called. And I guess, yeah, they're doing a Final Destination Reboot. I, I, I guess he's, he's, he's in that as well. Since he had a previous role in some of the other original films. So, yep, yep. He still has some work coming out. We'll be able to appreciate and hopefully enjoy. <laughs> 